Hello and welcome to the Lincoln Industrial Channel. I am John with the technical support team. Today we are covering the setup and programming of our 85307 controller for the use in a single line system. To understand the controller's capability cycling a single line system, let's first jump into the basics of a single line system. To help illustrate the key functions of this controller, I have created a single line parallel system equipped with our Flowmaster pump along with a vent assembly, a pressure switch, and SLVXL and SL32 injectors. In basic terms, a single line parallel system, or to link in a centromatic system, uses a centrally located pump to dispense lubricant into the supply line. The supply line pressure will activate the injectors in the supply line and dispense a metered amount of lubricant into the designated loop points. When the inline pressure switch trips, controller receives the signal which then shuts the pump off and opens the vent valve to relieve the pressure in the system. During this depressurization or venting phase, the injectors will reset and reload for the next cycle. Connecting the controller into the system starts with one 14-pin Molex Minifit Junior connector. This connector and an initial set of pins are supplied with each controller to build your own cable. For simplicity or the proper crimping tools are not available, we do offer a pre-assembled cable with color-coded and labeled wires. My demonstration system is wired without a reservoir switch and a second pressure switch. All other connections will be used. In regards to peripheral components such as low level and pressure switches, you will need to know the switching state of each in your system as it is necessary to enter the correct parameters into the controller. Also, while the unit has an integrated 8 amp fuse, this may not be enough to protect the system as a whole. The lubrication pump and vent assembly together in most systems have the highest amp draw, which in certain cases may draw more than 10 amps. If you believe you may draw more than 5 amps, we recommend using an external relay that can withstand up to 20 amps. I have reset this controller to the default settings so we can program it to run the tabletop system. To program the controller, enter the setup mode by pressing and holding the enter button while the controller is off. Then power on the controller. A red light to the left of the screen should illuminate indicating that you have entered the setup mode. For first time setup, you should see PLS display on the screen and the green light for the pump will flash. The first screen is the system type selection. Since we are setting up a single line system, select SLS by pressing the up arrow key, then press enter to confirm and move to the next setting screen. Pause time is next indicated by the P on the screen. You can press the up or down arrow to select the desired amount of pause time. Notice as you cycle through, the light indicators on the right will signal whether you are in seconds, minutes, or hours. We are going to select 30 seconds, then move to the Run screen. R is the runtime setting, or for single line applications, the setting indicating the number of cycles during one loop event. Default is one cycle of the system and what this system will be set to today. The controller does have the ability to run more than one cycle during a loop event. We will learn more on this setting later. T is the pressure switch timeout setting. You may have to manually run your system beforehand to time the duration it takes for the system to build pressure and cycle the injectors. I will show you how to do this with the controller already hooked up in a moment. This system takes about 7 seconds to build pressure, so we will take this time and add at least 50% or more, which rounded up will be 15 seconds. If the system does not build pressure in the allotted time, the controller will signal a pressure switch fault. Setting after timeout is the switching state of the pressure switch. In O stands for normally open, in C stands for normally closed. In my system's case, the pressure switch is normally closed, so we will change the setting and move to the next screen, which will then ask if a second pressure switch will be used. There is only one pressure switch in this system, so we will leave it at no. The U screen signifies the vent time setting for a system using a single pressure switch. Our recommended single line systems are configured using only one switch, so your vent time may be set to a short interval before entering the system pause time. System will continue to vent during system pause. The yes or no screen after vent time asks if a low level switch is installed. Should your pump assembly include a low level switch, select yes, otherwise select no. We will leave this at no and cycle to the final setting. The last screen programs the external signal out, whether you want it to flash or stay solid in the event a fault occurs. Final screen is the test mode. For the systems to save, you must see the TST screen before powering down. You may use this screen to test the system by depressing the up arrow key to run the pump to validate it functions correctly and the pressure switch trips at pressure. For those screens requiring specific setting times, you may first scroll through the screens to enter this screen. Cycle the pump to build pressure and time the duration it takes to trip the pressure switch or switches. Once times are cataloged, cycle around and input the rest of the necessary settings before saving. To save the program and exit the setup, stay in the TST screen. Power down the controller, then power it back up. Units should now begin counting down in the pause mode, or set itself into standby like this one did if a machine switch contact is wired in. Let's run a test loop cycle of the system to verify it functions correctly. To initiate a manual cycle, close the machine contact if used, then press the up arrow button. We should see or hear the pump power on to prime the lines and pressurize the system. Thank you. 
They have it. System functioned as designed, pressurized, dispensed, and vented correctly thanks to the 85307 controller. Now that we've seen a simple system run, let's discuss the additional settings you may use. To show the rest of the settings, we're going to simulate them on this test panel. Going in order of appearance, the first and interesting feature previous controller offerings did not have allows the controller to run more than one cycle per loop event. To use this, return to the R or run screen and set desired number of cycles. Additionally, adjust your vent pause settings so the system vents down enough that the injectors, switches, and all other components reset before the next cycle is initiated. Not a common configuration, but single line systems may be equipped with two pressure switches. Cycling through the programming, the first T screen will set the timeout setting for pressure switch one. The second T screen after selecting yes for the two switches sets both the fault time out for pressure switch two as well as the accumulative system vent pause time. Both switches must trip or a fault will occur. Pump shutoff and entrance into vent pause time is triggered by the first pressure switch. To enter main system pause, the second switch must trip and return to resting state. It may be necessary to place the first switch at the end of the line and the second switch near the pump assembly so they trip in the correct sequence. If you selected yes to use a low level switch, the next screen selects whether it is a normally open or a normally closed switch. The use of low level includes an additional error fault setting. FE stands for fatal error and will shut the pump off immediately when detected. NFE or non-fatal error will signal a fault but allow the pump to continue operation. That covers all the settings and features of the 85307 controller when used in a single line system. For any further assistance, feel free to contact our technical support team at the information on the screen. If you like the information provided and like to see more tutorial and informational videos just like this one, please hit that like button, feel free to subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell to stay informed when we post more videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.